Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer. Today we're here for yet another Civilization VI Wonder Spotlight, where today we'll be taking a look at yet another Gathering Storm Wonder, the University of Sankor. The University of Sankor is a medieval-era science-focused wonder, and uh, as it should, it unlocks with the education technology, which, as I just mentioned, does make it a medieval-era wonder, as have uh, all the other wonders that we've been covering recently. Uh, to get the inspiration, or sorry, the Eureka for education, all that you have to do is earn a great scientist. So, normally if you're playing for a science-focused game that you would be building University of Sankor in, you'll probably have gained a, at least one great scientist by the point you reach education. So, for the most part, if you're going to be building this wonder, you can kind of count on having education, uh, you know, uh, eureka already by the time you get to it. As far as its building requirements are concerned, they are actually a little bit more complicated than a lot of the other wonders we've talked about recently, so it has to be on either a desert or a desert hills, uh, sorry, desert or desert hills tile, and it has to be adjacent to a campus district that has a university constructed in it, so... Um, you actually can't build this wonder directly after researching education because uh, you do have to get the university built in the campus first and you unlock universities with education as well. So this is one of the few wonders in the game that you actually cannot start building directly after you unlock the technology. And just like with all of the other medieval era wonders, it does have a production cost of 710 production so you can estimate around 20 to 30 turns to build it in a normal city. One of the things that might make this a little bit different is the fact that this is a desert wonder, so if depending on what type of city you have, if you have a city that's very densely put in the desert, it might be actually a little bit difficult to build this wonder just because desert tiles have very poor yields, so if you have a lot of flat desert tiles, you're probably not going to have a lot of production, so this is one of the wonders that you actually have to do be a little bit careful about whenever you're planning on which city you want to build it in, because if you have a city that has really terrible yields, it's going to take you like 3,000 years to build this wonder. And as far as its bonuses are concerned, it has a lot of them, and it was hard for me to actually squeeze them all onto the page here, but hopefully they are clear enough. So it will provide plus three science to the city it's built in, it will provide plus one faith as well. Other civilizations' trade routes to the city that you have built this wonder in will provide plus one science and plus one gold to them. Um, it will also provide plus two science for every trade route to the city, so that's from either you or from other people. Uh, any trade routes that go into the city that you build, University of St. Corin, will give you plus two science. And then if those trade routes are domestic, you will also receive plus one faith from them. So, there's a whole lot of things going on here, and let's take a moment to just kind of tear it apart and actually figure out what this wonder does. So, obviously the plus three science, plus one faith, very, you know, standard, very simple, not really much going on there. Um... Let's start with actually the, the the third part of this, so plus two science for every trade route to this city, so this can be really good if you are a sieve that you know, maybe you're located between quite a few other sieves and you have a lot of people sending trade routes to your city, then this would be a city that you definitely would want to build University of Sankor in. Uh, I believe that you actually can check which uh, other sieves are sending trade routes to which of your cities in the trade route menu, so you can go ahead and take a look at that before you build this wonder if you have multiple cities that you can possibly build it in, and then you can place it strategically such that you get a lot of trade routes going into that city. Um, the other thing you could do is just route all your domestic trade routes into the universe or uh, into the city that you built University of Sankor in, because then for each one of those trade routes, you'll get two science and one faith, and that can add up fairly decently, especially if you have you know five or six trade routes. Getting an extra ten science, twelve science, um, and then five or six faith. Well, five or six faith is not particularly good, but ten or twelve science is pretty good. Um, so that is an instance where it actually can be useful to have this wonder. Obviously, the one really negative thing about this wonder is that although you do boost your own science, you also boost the science output of other civilizations if they are sending trade routes to your cities. Um, so they will gain plus one science and plus one gold. This is quite bad if you're playing on Deity, uh, just because, remember, the AI get percentage-based bonuses just straight up to their yields, so giving them one science actually turns into more than one science because of the, the percentage-based bonus that the Deity AI get. So in single player, this is really, really bad, and you can you can end up helping out your opponents quite a bit if you build University of Sankor. One thing that I should mention, it's not something I mention very often in these wonders, but if you are playing multiplayer, this can be a really good wonder to get, just because if you have, you know, maybe a friend that's next to you and you really want to work together with them, maybe you have an alliance, then you can get both you and them a little bit of extra science by uh, putting this wonder and having and telling them to, you know, direct all their trade routes to this city, that way they get the science from it and you do as well. 
As I've mentioned before though, I really don't play a lot of multiplayer, but looking at University of Sankor, I really think that that's what the intention of this wonder was, was for it to be, you know, a rather multiplayer focused wonder, because in single player, it's, there's nowhere near enough cooperation to get the AI to actually send their trade routes to your city that has this wonder in it. And now it is time to rate the University of Sankor. So as a lot of you know, all of our ratings go on a 1 to 5 scale, with 5 being the best and 1 being the worst. So for the overall rating for the University of Sankor, I honestly believe that it deserves a 1. It is... It is really just a terrible wonder, at like at, at least whenever we're going into single player. Whenever we're counting in multiplayer, I think it actually deserves a 3. So this is one of the few instances where I'm going to give multiple rankings, but in single player it definitely deserves a 1, in multiplayer it deserves a 3 just because of the ability to actually collaborate with people. So as far as use cases for this wonder are concerned, I really think that there's only one, and that's to generate a moderately sizable science boost uh, on the, the leaders that you may happen to have a lot of trade routes with, so people like Dido, people like Mansa Musa, or Victoria, that tend to get a lot of trade routes just because of how they play the game and some of their unique districts, then I think that this wonder can be okay. Uh, this is especially good on Mansa Musa because out of all of those leaders I mentioned, he's really the only one that tends to like to settle in desert, so it can be a little bit valuable on him. Once again though, as I've mentioned probably about a million times already, it's really hard to get DD AI, or just any AI as, as a whole, to actually cooperate and send their trade routes to this wonder. And then even whenever they do, you're, you're getting a bonus from it, but they are as well. And the higher up you go on difficulty, the, like, kind of the worse this gets, because although you're getting two science per turn and they're only getting one, if you're playing on Deity, they get that percentage-based boost to their science yield. So although it says they're only getting one, really they're getting more than that because of their uh, boost from difficulty. So the gap that you receive as compared to them shortens even more, and this wonder can be really, really terrible if you're playing single-player Deity. As I mentioned though, if you're playing multiplayer, this actually can be quite a novel wonder to get, and if you have, you know, maybe a, like a few pals that are around you that you want to trade with and boost your science, like, like I, I can imagine either myself or Dave building this whenever we play multiplayer together and then just sending trade routes to each other because me and Dave are always, you know, kind of teamed up whenever we play Civ for whatever reason, or really when we play anything. Um, so in those instances, I think that this wonder actually can be moderately good. Uh, as far as its difficulty rating is concerned, well, this is actually where it starts to look up for University of Sankor a little bit, because I think it deserves a 1. Very few of the AI actually build this wonder, so in almost every single game, you're going to have the option to build it as long as, you know, you satisfy the building requirements. So for that reason, I think it deserves the 1 in difficulty. And for its consistency rating, I think it deserves a 2. It's definitely not a very consistent wonder. You can have some games where you get virtually no bonus out of it, and some games where you get a lot of bonus out of it based on just kind of how things go with trade routes, who wants to send trade routes to you, maybe who doesn't want to send trade routes to you. So for that reason, there's a lot of variability in how good this wonder actually, or you know, how many bonuses this wonder actually provides. So for that reason, I think it deserves the 2 inconsistency. So thank you everyone for watching, I have been the Saxy Gamer. if you enjoyed the video feel free to like, if not feel free to dislike, if you're looking for some more Civilization 6 content feel free to subscribe, thank you for watching, and goodbye.